Bible says, come to me all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my joke of life and let me teach you, because I am going to be gentle, and you will find rest for your soul.
Please be seated. Psalms 34 7. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continue to be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thou and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us lift his name together. Revelation 14 13. Said so I heard a voice saying unto me, right, blessed are the dead that die in the Lord. Henceforth forever. Yea, said the Spirit, that they may rest from their labor and their works do follow.
the passing of our brother in Christ, is the will of God in all of the human bonds that fills our hearts with sorrow will be replaced with joy, as we know that Brother Moses is now in a much better place. Amen. Therefore, be it resolved that we embrace the family because of all of us have a common bond that will connect us for the rest of our lives. We cannot replace Brother Moses, but will attempt to demonstrate his love to you. Be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution be given to the family and a copy kept in the church archives. We acknowledge the family of Brother Robert Wayne Moses that your loss is great, but heaven has gained a noble servant. We want you to know that your family will always have a place here at Mount Shelton Missionary Baptist Church, and we will be here to help you in any way we can. Yeah. Humbly submitted by Mount Chapel Missionary Baptist Church, Dr. Clarence Rice, Pastor, Saturday, April 22nd, 2023. May the warm, beautiful memories of someone you love have washed over you at this time and stay with you forever in deepest sympathy. Acknowledgements from the family. Your words have comforted us. Your support has strengthened us. And your love has sustained us. We extend our deepest thanks to you for your kindness during our greatest sadness. We appreciate it more than words can express, and it will always be remembered. The family of Brother Robert Wayne Moses. Amen. Amen.
praise in you ought to let it out right now. Never praise in you ought to let it out right now. God's been good to you. Even though you feel like the day God is still good, He's still in control. He's still lifting up our down there. He hasn't done anything for you. Now is the time for you to take this opportunity. Give God what He deserves because He works.
spent those 28 years in that very same uniform. But we're soldiers in the army of the Lord. Amen. 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 Has, has, has anybody from your family ever served in the military? Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what I've discovered? I've discovered that there are few in between families that have never had any of their family members serving in the military. But then there's always those that are, uh, some of those families that have long histories of producing men and women who have given themselves to serve and protect our nation's freedom. Simply because these veterans, they know the importance of God and country. And simply because they have served meritoriously as a part of the nation's defense operations. I'm talking about an honorable discharge. But what I want to talk about, I want to talk about the saints who spend their lives helping others and serving in the kingdom of God. Those are the folks who are soldiers in the army of God. They volunteered for the service they, with the full knowledge of knowing that being in God's army requires a sacrificial service that probably won't draw a whole lot of accolades from society. They knew it could mean that they would be unpopular. It could even be dangerous. Like good soldiers, though, every saint stands ready to defend his faith regardless of the cost. And today, a soldier who knows the Lord served in two armies, one for the nation and one for the Son of God. But as believers, we ought to strive to serve God to the fullest of our lives every day. We ought to be standing ready as a soldier to serve, to protect the kingdom of God. Because we get joy in knowing that our honorable service will be rewarded in the end. Here is Paul, and Paul is giving instructions to Timothy concerning the service of the kingdom of God. Paul uses three singular attributes to demonstrate to Timothy how his life worked to please God. He, he referred to the commitment of a soldier in verses 3 and, and verse 4, the discipline of an athlete in verse 5, and the persistence of a farmer in verse, verse number 6. But Paul uses these attribute, attributes of a soldier to describe the Christian life. All right. As Paul was writing to young Timothy, he pointed out to the Roman military as he examined and that he would be an example because military service then as it does right now, involves self-sacrifice. Yes. Am I right, Steve? That's what I'm talking about. Yes. It involves endurance. It involves discipline. It involves yes. vigilance. It involves obedience. It involves ready cooperation with others. It involves sympathy. It involves enthusiasm. And it involves loyalty. Yes. And every believer pleases God if he enters the kingdom of God and enters it with service and commitment just like the soldier. Yes. There was a good comparison that Paul used because the Roman soldier was selected for service based on his commitment to Rome. I'm getting to it. I'm getting to where I'm going somewhere. All right. Because the soldiers who were committed, they fought hard, complained less, and endured more than anybody else. They stood head and shoulders above the rest because their commitment, I'm going somewhere, was based upon a love for God and country and not for personal glory. Yes, yes. To be a good soldier, Paul said, young Timothy, you got to be prepared yes, Lord. to endure hardness, yes, but Lord. you got to have a sense of commitment and loyalty. Yes. And, and, and commitment had one thing to do with the, the, the purpose that God has called us to be. And that purpose ought to have one goal, one mark, yeah. one pride, yeah. and everything else is secondary. Yeah. Because I, I want you to understand this. That there are three types of soldiers. All right. The drafted, the volunteer, and the mercenary. Right. Now watch. A draftee serves uh, because he's required to do so yes, sir. under the threat of going to jail. Yes, sir. That's, right. That's, right. That's right. A draftee has reservations about his service, yes. and he'll quit if he was given the option. Yes. Right. A mercenary is a soldier. That's for hire, and, yes, and he fights for any army, any army that's willing to pay him, and, yes, and, and, and has little devotion for the cause and the fight, but he wants the money and the money alone. Yes, but a soldier who volunteers yes, believes in the cause, and he yes, does so out of his love for country and God. Yes, the military has learned that volunteers, yes, the Army, the Air Force, Marines, the, the, the Coast Guard, and the Navy, they've learned that Volunteers make the best soldiers. Yeah. The same is true about those who, who choose to be 
these soldiers in the army of Lord oh, of the yeah. Lord. They, we decide to take up this Christian life. Yeah. We ought not to enlist just because the, uh, that that there, there's a draft out there, Come on. and we don't want to be drafted against our will. Neither should we become a Christian because. We, we think that it's, it's a shortcut to prosperity and some kind of payment. It's a, it's a way. I'm going to join the church today because I see everybody getting blessed. So I want to call it a So I'm going to get in there the church and all because I want to get paid. I want my blessing. But those who serve in the army of the Lord and those who believe in the kingdom of God, they volunteer to teach. Yes, they volunteer to sing. Yes. They volunteer to serve. They volunteer to be a witness. Yes. Oh, yes. That's it. That's it. And because of that volunteer spirit, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. because of that spirit, they remain committed to the cause of Christ long after everybody else is gone. Yes. They, they go the extra mile because they are soldiers yes. in the army of the Lord. Yes. Y'all ain't getting it done. Let me see if I can get it on. When, when, yes. when a boy joins the, the military, yes. a few months later, he returns home as a man. Yes, sir. He goes as a boy, yes. but he comes back as a man. Yes. But what makes him a man is not the uniform that he's wearing. That can make him a man. He becomes a man as a result of the training that he endured using what's called boot camp. Yes. He learns what it takes in boot camp yes. to be a soldier. He learns how to endure in boot camp. To be a soldier. He learns how to march and live in sync with others. He learns to take orders. He learns to respect leadership. He learns how to follow the chain of command. He learns when and how to speak up, but he also knows when to shut up. He, he learns how to conduct himself as a gentleman and he accepts others as his brothers, whether black or white, red or yellow. He accepts everybody as his brother. In short, in other words, he learns how to obey. Don't get too happy. Has anybody who expects to be a soldier in the army of the Lord? You've got to learn the same thing. It's not the uniform that makes you a soldier. It's your faith in God and your willingness to, to discipline yourself to follow the will of God. It takes discipline to learn the Bible. It takes discipline to obey God rather than man. It takes discipline to have your steps ordered by the Lord. It takes discipline. Not to cuss your neighbor out. It takes discipline not to come up in church and not speak to folk. It takes discipline. Boot camp for the military begins when a child leaves home. But for the soldier in the army of the Lord, it begins at home. It begins in your house when you teach your child how to say, I will follow. Who are in heaven? Y'all know that. Yeah. It begins to train up a child in the way he should go. And when he gets older, he won't depart. But finally, brothers and sisters, when a tenure of a soldier is complete, he looks forward to going home. Right now. And to do that lawfully, he needs a discharge. In the closing scenes of the movie Glory that started my twin brother Denzel. <laughs> in the closing scenes of the movie, the movie told the story of the 54th Regiment. By the way, they were all black except for two of the commander and the major, but everybody else was black. But during the Civil War, the soldiers were preparing to attack another army camp. Yeah. And they were going to attack this army camp with the knowledge, the full knowledge of knowing that a lot of them may not, may not make it back home out of the camp. Right. Right. The commander looked the white guy. The commander looked at the flag man and asked the question. He said, if this man should fall in battle, who will pick up the flag? The, all, the, the flag bearer fell down in the middle of battle, but another soldier came right along and picked up the flag. And the question I got from you today is the same question. If this soldier had fought, who will pick up the flag? Who among his classmates, who, who called him Mundo? Who, who among his classmates? Who among his friends? Who among his family who called him Wayne? Who among his family will pick up the banner? 
die. Yes. And when a soldier joins the army, he enlists. Yeah. And when he gets out, I'm going somewhere, he gets a discharge. Yeah. But a good soldier don't just want any kind of discharge. There's a certain discharge yeah. Yeah. that he's looking for. Yeah. Because the benefits of being a good soldier oh, yes. depends on what kind of discharge you get. Yeah. Somebody gonna get it in just a minute. Yeah. If he served well yeah. but had a few problems, mm -hmm. he might receive a general discharge. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. That's an okay discharge, but it don't get you all the benefits right. of going somewhere. Right. If his misconduct brought shame to the service, mm -hmm. he might receive a less than honorable discharge. Yeah. Yeah. It is not the worst kind of discharge, but that ain't gonna get you no benefits either. <laughs> if he's been court-martialed and, yeah. and found guilty of violating the Uniform Code of Military Justice, he gonna get a dishonorable discharge. Yes. And a dishonorable discharge is like a kiss of death. Yes. Because very few folk wanna hide. Yes. Government jobs are closed off to you. Yes. And despite all of your service time, you ain't got no benefit to show for your years of service. Yes. But if you've been a good soldier yes. and served honorably in the service of the Lord, yes. you can expect to receive on the wings of an angel an honorable discharge yes. and all of its benefits. That's what I like about serving in the army of the Lord. That's what I like about being a soldier for the Lord. Because yeah. it got so many benefits. Yeah. Anybody ever had any benefits? Yeah. Anybody ever had food put on your table? Yeah. Anybody ever had clothes put on your back? Anybody ever had water when you got thirsty? Yeah. Anybody ever had a rock in a weary land? Yeah. Anybody ever had shoes on your feet? Y'all didn't get that. Let me get a little, let me get a little deep. The Bible said, What shall I render unto the Lord for all of his benefits? I'm in the book toward me. Paul wrote Timothy and told him that he had received the discharge notice. And he was looking forward to receiving the benefits of salvation. I can hear what he said. I'm going to call him Wayne because I'm part of the family. I can hear Wayne say, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I kept the faith. There is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, but not for me by myself. One of these old days, some soldier on the battlefield is going to receive the challenge from the commander in chief. Paul told Timothy, when the battle is over, we shall wear a crown. But until that day, we got to put on the whole. Not some of them, we got to put on the whole of oh God. Put on the, I came to tell somebody today, put on the whole arm of that God. And just go tell the story. We got to tell the world about Jesus. Here it is. Tell them that he lived. Tell them that he died. But we got to make sure we tell them.
Lord, invaded our ranks. Yes, Lord. And took from us our dear father. Yeah. Our dear brother. Yeah. Our dear cousin. Yeah. Our dear brother in Christ. Yes. Took him in to an undiscovered country. Yeah. That no traveler will return. Okay. That's it. That's it. From earth to earth. Ashes to ashes. Yeah. And dust to dust. Yeah. It has become our sad privilege to commit him back to the dust. Yeah. But our all inspiring privilege yeah. to commit his soul yeah. back to the Lord. Yeah. That he would give us a peace yeah. that will surely pass oh. all understanding. That's it. In Jesus Christ, we come. Thanking you now for this privilege. Thanking you for the life, the love, and the legacy of Brother Wayne, Robert Wayne Smith. God, we ask that you would just lift up the family now. Bless them. But God, the question is, who will pick up the blood stained back? Who will tell the story? God, we thank you now for all you've done. And the only name that matters. And the marvelous, the miraculous, the awesome, the available, the powerful, and the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Arnold. Thank you, Pastor Rice. God bless you, Dad. Sister, on behalf of his force of staff and management of the Heavenly Gates, come on to the West Dallas, the CEO, also the Elisha, and the Director for the Church. We say to you, family, thank you for trusting him into our care during his transition. The Word of God reminds us that saints don't die. To fall asleep. Yes. Because if that was not true, we wouldn't get up on Sunday morning and sing that song that says, When all God's children get together, yes. 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 what a time that's going to be. But the uh, irony of it all is that in order to see Brother Moses again, you got to get your business right on this yes. side. Yes. 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 Get your business right on this side, you will see him again. And your oh, yes. eternal destination oh, is up yes. to you Stop where you spend on. eternity. Because yes. one thing we know that for the child of God, this is just a land that we're passing through. Oh, traveling on because we're on our way home. Yeah. And so we like to say to you, family, be encouraged. Mm -hmm. David Penn in Psalm 121, a very, very, very important scripture uh, that helps us this time because sorrow and tragedy and, and, and circumstances like this tend to have your head bowed down. But David Penn, he says, I will lift up my eyes and to the yes. Lord. Yes. 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 Because my help coming from the Lord. So we encourage you from this day to look forward and keep your hand in God's hand. He's a promise keeper. Yes, he promised us in his word. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you, but I'll be with you always. And I just want to let you know, as a witness, I trust in him. And he has kept his promises. Amen. So we say to you, we hope that our services have been professional, have met or exceeded your expectations. If you have any questions or concerns at any time, please give our office a call at your earliest convenience. God bless you again. God keep you. He is going to be our friend with you. We have a benediction to Libra and this entire family. My prayer is that God will give you the peace, the comfort, and the understanding that you need. Amen. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, to present you fall before his glory with exceeding joy. To only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty, power and dominion, both now and forever. And we all say together, Amen. 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 God bless you.